Dean, welcome to the mother of all talk shows. Uh, congratulations on your work, which I have now uh, studied uh, carefully at length. Um, tell us, as an overview, what's the situation there in the Agreed. Ukraine? Uh, thank you for inviting me on. Um, the situation at the moment is that the people there are stuck between a rock and a hard place. They're, they're being shelled by their own government. They're um, self-declared republics. Um, their they're hands are tied, really. Um, they're being shelled on a daily basis. Um, Western media seem to refuse to report on any any of the the atrocities that are going on in Donbass. I mean, over the past sort of seven years, it's going into the eighth year now, in the Donbass alone, they've seen 152 children killed, 146 children injured. You'll never find that anywhere. You, you, you'd have to search for that information. Western media refuse to report on it. Um, going back sort of like the past few years, um, I, I'd witnessed the Maidan revolution in Ukraine. I saw the coup that was staged by the US and backed by Western governments to overthrow a legally elected government that spiralled Ukraine into a civil war. A civil war that now, that when Western media do report on, they say, oh, this is Russian aggression, this is President Putin, this is Russia. It was nothing to do with them. This was caused by the West. Indeed, as so many things are. Let me ask you bluntly, have you seen any Russian military in Ukraine? None at all, George. In fact, the first time when I went to uh, the Donetsk People's Republic, I went there back in uh, May 2019. And when I went there, I had to kind of plead with the press agency. I kind of said, like, look, I, I need military accreditation to go to a frontline position. And they said uh, they, they gave me the accreditation. Um, I made my own sort of way around Donetsk and... I went to a frontline position called Yasnavata. It's one of the, the hottest positions that, that's still red hot now. I went there. Uh, the, the guys that were there, they're in mismatched uniforms. They're, they're fighting. They're, they're wearing crocs on their feet. Uh, these aren't Russian soldiers. And when I asked them about that, they said, um, you can see our passports, if you like. And these guys were local. They showed me their uh, passports for the Donetsk People's Republic. They're not Russian. They... They, they ethnically see their heritage as Russian, but they're not Russian. There are no Russian soldiers there. You can tell by the equipment they're using, like I said, the mismatched uniforms, they're, they've got no military boots on their feet. They're just local guys from villages that do not want to be invaded by what they see as the fascists from Kiev. Well, uh, one can understand that if one knows the history of Ukraine, the history of the coup that you described uh, vividly there and the, uh, the culture and language of millions of people in eastern Ukraine. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is going to be an, um, a major pressure on Russia to intervene if the Ukrainian government begins a full-scale assault on eastern Ukraine, which may have begun this day. There was heavy shelling today reported by nobody in the Western media. Exactly. I mean, this, this is kind of like a daily occurrence. When I hear about shelling, it, it, it's like water off a duck's back. I see it every day. I've got friends and colleagues out there. Obviously, I'm back in the UK now, but I work very closely with correspondents that are on the ground, trusted ones. And I, I just get the reports coming in daily and that there are people injured. Uh, we had a guy injured the other day. He had his leg injured from shrapnel. And that may not seem like a big deal, but when I've gone there, people have said to me, um, what do people say in your country? And I have to tell them, people in my country don't realise there's a conflict going on in Ukraine. The only reason it's been in the news lately is because of the NATO build-up on the borders, where typically the Western government have to be there poking the bear, as usual, uh, instigating, um, encouraging Russia to try and react. What are we even doing there? What are our forces doing in Ukraine? Do you, uh, do you think Russia will react? Yes, I do. Simply because there are 
so many people that we, I mean, they already had 350,000 that were um, opted to have Russian citizenship anyway when it was released, what was it, 18 months ago, something like that. They give people the opportunity of having dual citizenship. 350,000 applied. Now we're hearing today that um, anybody in the Donbass uh, can become Russian citizens. So technically what you'll be seeing is um, if Ukraine enter there with the backing of of the West, which they've already supplied so much military aid there anyway, uh, Russia will have to intervene. There's no way they, they will sit on the fence and not react. I'm pretty certain of that. So today, the Ukrainian coup, uh, fascist-backed regime, asked the UK, the US, and NATO, and the European Union to send soldiers there uh, to eastern Ukraine. Do you think that's remotely likely? West, Western soldiers are there anyway. They're training Ukrainian troops. They've Not as trainers, them. but as frontline soldiers. No. No, I don't think they will. I don't think they will. Ukraine have been asking for that for a number of years. In fact, they've been asking for that since the conflict started in 2014. And the, uh, the West haven't put ground troops in there yet to actually fight alongside Ukrainian soldiers. What's it like in, the, in these uh, self-proclaimed republics? How well organised are they? Do you know what, George? They're, they're organised amazingly well. They're, they're not the easiest to enter, I'll have to admit. So if, you, if anyone did want to enter, you have to go via Russia, enter through a border that way. Um, but when you go in there, the streets are very clean. They've got their own police, their own army. Um, the, the schools are running, the universities are running. Uh, everything runs fine. They've got coffee shops there. Uh, it's very much like you'd expect where when you go in a coffee shop, they've got their Instagram tag there. It's, 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 it is very well organised. And, and the only thing that obviously makes them probably slightly different uh, if you're a Westerner, if you went there, is that the banking system doesn't work. You, you can't use a credit card there. There is a curfew in place between, I think it's 10pm to 6am for safety reasons. But other than that, it is like being in any normal European city. In the evening, people sit on Pushkin Boulevard. They'll have coffees. Uh, people sit there playing on iPads. It, 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 is, very, it, it is very well organised as it is. The only difference is, I'd say, when I was there was when, as sometimes as the evening draws in, you'll hear the boom of shelling in the distance. And it's quite... Surreal, I suppose, when you're sitting there and people are sitting there on park benches and they're, they're talking and you can hear this booming of shelling in the distance. Amazing. Um, now, what do the people there want? What would be their demand? The, if the Ukraine said to the People's Republics, all right, let's negotiate, what would their bottom line be, do you think? One thing that's not on the negotiation table is giving up the republics. They have said too much blood has been spilt, especially that of children, to give up the republics. So the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republic will not reintegrate back into Ukraine. That is not on the table at all. They've made that clear from day one. But they do want peace. And that was the unusual thing when I went there. When I went there and wandered around the streets and I spoke to people in coffee bars and on park benches, I kind of thought they'd be talking about retaliation and stuff, but those people talk about peace. They want peace, but they want to be left alone. They do not want to be part of government-controlled Ukraine anymore. And they haven't been now for, for over seven years. Now, but, your, uh, your volume of work is uh, considerable. You're back in the UK now. Are you planning on going back? Yes, yeah, so I won't be able to return now till probably May next year, simply because the, the border in Donetsk... Uh, to uh, foreign journalists and to outsiders. This has been closed since, for about two years now anyway. So, and that's due to COVID restrictions. No foreigners are allowed in. I respect them rules. Um, hoping to go back in May 2022 and uh, pick up where I left off. And how can people follow your work? They can follow me on Twitter. Uh, if you just type in Dean O'Brien Donbass, I'll, I'll come up in a search engine. I'll, I'll come up on Twitter. I think I'm probably one of the only Westerners that is tweeting in the English language regarding Donbass anyway. Dean, you're a gentleman. Thanks for joining us 
and safe journey when you eventually go back.